Yo, what's up? This is Kay from Matriarchs, and you are watching the local band Smoke Out. And do that right there. Ladies and gentlemen. The Death of Zenith! Yeah, yeah, hell yeah! What's up, brother? How are you doing today? Pretty good, man. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, for those that may not know you, Caleb, do me a favor. Introduce yourself. Let us know whereabouts in the world you are. Please plug and promote anything and everything. Awesome, awesome. Uh, uh, my name is Caleb Strauss of The Death of Zenith. I, for all practical intents and purposes, am The Death of Zenith. Um, that is what I kind of half-jokingly refer to as a collaborative solo project. Because it's what it is at the end of the day is it's me, but it's, sometimes it's also me with collaborators. Um, also the co-managing director and co-founder of Soul Lunar Records. And um, we're working on a lot. One of the blessings and curses of my life is I never have just one thing going on. Um, of course, our big project right now is the movie and soundtrack to Overnight. And um, I'm also producing the new EP from the Antihero, who recently joined our ranks. So, hell yeah. We had a, uh, I, I want to I talk about Overnight. Overnight, just explain to me how this whole project came about. Because uh, it, it seems like you've got a pretty damn good cast as far as the, the soundtrack goes. But talk to me about what the movie is, where people can see it when it's time, etc. Sure. Um, so it stems back from uh, 2001. I was 19 years old when I had the very, very first idea that would sort of germinate into this. Um, it was very piecemeal over a period of 20 years. So like things would come. Um, one night I was uh, I was living. I wasn't living. I was staying up in Fredericksburg with my dad. Um, I'm here in Abilene, Texas, where I was born and raised. And um, if you've never heard of that, don't feel bad. We have but, actually. Uh, We're really good friends with a band called Soothsayer I'm... from Abilene, Texas. Oh, awesome. Okay, yeah. I know of Soothsayer. Sweet. Okay, okay cool. cool. Um, so, yeah, two and a half hours south from here is Fredericksburg, Texas, kind of near San Antonio and Austin. And uh, my dad lived there for about 20 years. I was up there kind of taking care of him because he'd had some surgery. Um, my uh, This was after my freshman year of college. And... Um, I was hanging out at the house a lot, and I remember the IFC channel was running this big, like, weekend-long David Lynch marathon. And I got way into David Lynch. Um, I'm into weird shit anyway, but I was, I guess it was, a lot of it was boredom. But um, I guess a lot of that seeped into my consciousness. And one night I was falling asleep, and I was listening to, uh, to some music, and um, I had this kind of dream you know you know when you're like you're not quite asleep yet but you're like weird shits on your eyelids you know <laughs> sure. you, you start the dmt's dumping into your brain and you're seeing and experiencing weird things and i just had this image of a boy in a suit and kind of looked like the kid off of the cover of life is peachy by corn walking in slow motion through this red hotel hallway kind of like is look at the hotel reminded me of the hotel in the shining you know it was empty it was lit it was there's electricity it's clean but there's empty nobody's in it and i woke up immediately from that because it was kind of nightmarish and i i wrote that down you know i was like okay this is something um and then over the years other things would come the next thing would come would be the villain character and then the next thing that came would be sort of the protagonist character and over the years i would try to think maybe it's a movie maybe it's a play maybe it's a book and i keep trying things but um it just really didn't gel until about 2019 2020 when pandemic hit and i started working on it again and had experienced enough in my life to kind of put a little bit more of myself in it um, but it's a, it's a psychological thriller. It is very David Lynch inspired. Obviously we've got the soundtracks, you know, that we're selling on our band camp. The movie is about, um, a couple, uh, their names are Craven and Darcy and they are on the run from these contract killers cause he's involved with the cartel. And, um, it's kind of a, it, it's sort of a love story set in a really violent, chaotic, dark place and world. Um, cause the heart of the thing is their love story, but they're in this hotel, the overnight hotel where not only contract killers are trying to kill them, but there's also the boy and all these other spirits and entities and energies that seem to be malevolent and coming at them as well. So that's kind of the basic premise of it. Did you create like the script and everything too? Yes. Yeah. I wrote the script. Um, and again, there were like multiple, multiple versions. Um, but it, it finally solidified about three or four years ago. And, um, 
this you know when Deja and i started up solunar records we were looking for kind of a big product to be sort of like our flagship product because we actually didn't expect to sign as quickly as we ended up doing and we thought this would be a cool way to include some bands and artists that are friends of ours and that would sort of create like a cultural calling card for the label like this is the kind of artist we're looking for that we'd like to work with and it's a fairly diverse mix and of course at this point now we've got you know, me, Blood of the Beloved, As I Speak, The Antihero, and they're all on the soundtrack. It's actually two soundtrack albums, but they're all we're all on it somewhere. And then, of course, we got our buddies like, you know, Feast on the Fallen, Seethe, Nine Stitch Method, Mad Clock, Silhouette Death, uh, lots of people. So it all kind of uh, synchronistically fell into place the way it needed to, but it, it did take about 20 years. I mean, late's better than never. Late's better than never. Is there is there a right. tentative release date? We had a, we had as I speak on the other day, and we we asked him if he was invited to the party, and he said yes. But I don't think yeah. he I don't really think he yeah. told us when the like screening for for actors and soundtrack members is uh, going to happen. Yeah, we want to do that here in Abilene, and we want to do it on uh, February fourteenth, this Valentine's Day. Um, we released last this past year. We released the first half of the soundtrack on Valentine's Day. And uh, we called it the Unvalentine's Day campaign. There's a story like, you know, I say it's a love story, but it, it, there's a lot of commentary on like the way modern culture views romantic love. And, you know, some some of it's a little critical. And so we came up with this Unvalentine's Day thing and we thought it would be cool if the movie actually screened a year out from the first half of the soundtrack on Unvalentine's Day. So we want to have it on Feb 14th. And uh, that would mean we need to be shooting pretty much that we need to be done shooting pretty much by like the end of November. But that's the tentative date. And uh, the second half of the soundtrack will probably be out a month or so before that. How did you how did you find Sam Astaroth uh, for for the I forget the name of it. I'm sorry. Portal, I believe. Portal. Yeah. yeah. How did you find yeah. Sam? Were you already a fan um, of his? And what was it what was it like working with him? Yeah, it's great working with Sam. I love Sam. I'm a huge fan now. Um, so I used to work for First Angel Media, and um, I think he was my first or second writing assignment. I He had done a cover of a, a DMX song as like a tribute. You know, this just wasn't long after DMX passed. And um, uh, the, the lead writer at the time had forwarded me that cover and his info, and... Um, I was just blown away because he was doing this like it was a DMX cover. He was doing like his growl rap thing you right. know, that he it's does different. over it. It's and different. I was blown away by what he did. Yeah, definitely. And at the time, you know, he'd had a band called Astaroth Incarnate, but he was interested in uh, being a little bit more genre fluid and exploring some of his hip hop roots because he's a huge hip hop head as well as a metal head. And um, when I called him to interview him, we had a great interview, but we also really hit it off. And um I, we had kind of discussed the ideas of of existing as a solo artist or the possibility of that. We were both in bands at the time. And um, so Portal was a cool thing because it was it was our first, it was both of our first solo song, like when we went solo together. So we kind of started our solo journeys together. And um, we kind of been friends ever since then, you know. So Sam's a great guy. He's uber talented and he's really killing it right now too. Hell yeah. And deservedly so. How do, how do you go about the process of finding an artist that you want on Solunar? That's a great question. Um, we, uh, what's cool about Deja and I is we like, we're both like into metal and rock and really various forms of music. But like, whereas she, she tends to be a little bit more like meat and potatoes metal. You know, I'm always looking, I'm kind of the guy, I was more of an alternative kid. I kind of still am. So I'm always looking for some, like, I love heavy shit, but I'm always looking for something a little different. You know, um, I think the main things I look for in a, in a potential artist signing is, um, do you have a unique voice? Do you have something to say? Um, do you stand out in your purported genre in some way? You know, cause I, I, you know, it's like, I don't have anything against any genre. I like things from all genres, but if it's like an artist that just sort of ticks the boxes of a style of music, like, you know, it's like, maybe you're a great deathcore band, but that's what you are and that's where it ends. It's nothing personal. I'm going to be asleep by the middle of song two, you know? Cause like, I just come from kind of a different world and a different set of tastes. I, um, I grew up on records where like artists did 
violently different things from track one to track two. And it made sense in the context of that record, you know, which is why I think the genre fluidity uh, itch has never really been completely scratched with me. I'm always looking for the way different styles of music are the same as opposed to different. Not that an artist has to be that fluid necessarily, but I do look for a, at least a, a message or a voice or a, or a presence or a chem, uh, like a charisma that sets it apart and makes it just not just another run of the mill piece of that genre, if that makes sense. Are you, are you looking for more artists? And if so, how would you prefer an artist that may be watching or see this on YouTube tomorrow? How would you prefer them submit to you? Um, that's another great question. So we are um, always looking to talk to artists. Um, we are sort of in a place where we're, we, we want to focus on getting overnight done and focus on building the fan bases of the four artists we have before we jump too quickly into signing another. But that doesn't mean we're never open to the conversation. You know what I mean? Because timelines are always flexible. The best way is to submit an email to uh, contact at solunarrecords.com. And, um, you know, just introduce yourself, come professional, you know, uh, a, a link with no message is is probably, we, we're probably gonna delete that email. <laughs> you know, I guess another thing I would say is I look for artists that know how to compose an email. I mean, I hate to be a boomer about it, but I just like, you know, know how to compose an email, guys. <laughs> Slap, know, like, slapping a, a nice EPK attached to the link probably, yes. probably helps. And yeah. Stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you don't have to like completely have your shit together yet because one of the things that sets us apart from other labels is we'll sort of help you get there. But like you do, I, I, I do prefer artists that know how to present themselves because that shows that they've done the homework of how to present themselves out in the artistic world, you know, going forward. So how'd you meet Deja and realize that uh, she was she was business part partner level? So Deja and I have actually known each other for 20 years and full disclosure, we actually just came out of the closet with this, with a, a, a teaser video with, as I speak's cover, just pretend. So the main characters in overnight Craven and Darcy basically are me and Deja. Um, we, we knew each other for 20 years. We were high school sweethearts and um, we just kind of lost contact over the years, but over the years, we'd kind of keep circling back in each other's lives and then we'd split again and circle back and split again. And um, I uh, was in the middle of a huge life transformation in, in pandemic. I, I just got divorced and um, I was thinking about leaving. I was teacher for 10 years. I was thinking about leaving teaching. Um, I guess on paper, you could have kind of called it a midlife crisis, <laughs> but I, it was basically course correction. It was me heading towards the life I should have been headed towards like 20 years ago. But I just, you know, that's a whole other story. But um, around that time, Deja and I had a, uh, reconnected and um at first it was just a personal reconnection and it was actually her idea to start so lunar records i think she came to me i want to say two years ago this may and said have you ever thought about starting a record label i kind of want to like i kind of want to start a record label she'd had some capital sitting on the side from a job she'd had with the state uh, like a retire you know retirement money and um that's what she wanted to do with it. And I was like, actually, I've been I've always kind of wanted to start a record label because I have a totally different way of wanting to do it. And um, and then and this was also around the time I was picking up the overnight script and see, originally the script was not about her and I at all. But see, that was what I realized the missing piece was. Um, it had no emotional spine because I wouldn't put my own experience in it. And in reconnecting with her, I realized, ah, that's what's missing. So this needs to be about us because that's what's gonna make it resonate. And at first we weren't really even gonna be honest about the fact that it was us, but like the more we've gone through the process of promoting and shooting and coming up with content and the soundtrack, that's what's kept people invested is the fact like, oh shit, like half of this actually really happened. You know what I mean? Obviously it's heavily fictionalized. Uh, we've never been in a haunted hotel before. Obviously, we can barely get out of a non haunted hotel and save our <laughs> fucking lives with, with our wallets and cell phones. Intact. But um, but so there's a lot of like, you know, metaphor and there's a lot of like uh, a lot of the supernatural elements in the story are metaphors for things like uh, addiction or codependency or um, uh, feelings of inadequate psychological hang ups or whatever. You know what I mean? Um, so I basically took like 
the story I had and meshed it with our story. And that was around the time I thought about because I'd always wanted to put a compilation soundtrack together because you don't see those anymore. Really. Mm. You know what I mean? Like Spawn and The Crow and Lost Highway and all that badass shit, you know, where like a bunch of artists would come together and maybe even go a little outside of what they would normally do to create the world of this film on a musical level. And it seemed to serve two purposes because it was helping me world build for overnight. And it was also creating kind of, like I say, a cultural calling card for the label. And so that overnight kind of became the centerpiece of the whole label, which I, I guess it's weird for a, mu a record label to be making a movie. But <laughs> I think that's but, cool. Um, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, it's it's been it's been a blast. And I mean, it is like a very like music driven movie. You know what I mean? It's kind of like uh, there are parts of it that are almost like Pink Floyd's The Wall. You know what I mean? Where it's like driven by the soundtrack and it's real abstract visuals. And I mean, there's there's traditional dialogue, traditional scenes in it, too. But it's sort of a, mi a mix of uh, of those mediums. So hell yeah. Were you prepped on the trivia hot sauce portion of the show? All right. So here's the thing. I don't have any hot sauce, but. I have something I hate far worse than hot sauce. Okay. So if I get stomped, I'm doubly fucked, and that is white vinegar. I I'll, I'll, hate vinegar. We'll, we'll take it. I actually have uh, apple cider vinegar, so I'll match you on the ah, on the vinegar right. level. If uh, all I'll, right, I'll cool. say it either way. But cool. what what movie or TV show, one or the other, have you seen the uh, most? Fight Club. Fight, Fight Club. Club. About I twenty about twenty seven yeah. times, huh? Yeah, it's a Limp Bizkit line. If you're... <laughs> Fight Club. <laughs> Give me a second to look up trivia on that. Um, but uh, let's say let's say overnight comes out in on February fourteenth, Valentine's Day. What what is next after that? Because I imagine that is twenty years of weight off your shoulder. It's out. It's received well. You're you're proud of it. What is the next big thing? Obviously, I know you want to focus on some of the artists and, and expanding and this and that, but what what's next yeah well for the death of xena specifically i'm already kind of writing uh for what will be uh my first full-length record and um you know the music i've done for the death of xena so far like every song like other than like the cola you know like the seed cypher or like me featured on somebody else's work every song i've done for my work is from overnight and so i've geared those songs to fill a certain musical void in that world so what i do next may not necessarily be exactly stylistically on par with what you've heard so far um it's a lot of what i'm writing right now is i mean it's real eclectic but i'm writing a lot of really heavy stuff uh i am writing some kind of trippy electronic stuff uh, it's real melodic it's real hook driven uh, and then simultaneously to that, I have a covers record that I want to make called The Blanket. So I'll be recording those two records in tandem with each other. Why, my next why The Blanket? Thing. So it's kind of a play on words because like it's a covers album, The Blanket, you know. But um, the theme of it is every cover I've chosen is a song that has some sort of comforting memory associated with it for me. So it's like a bomb, you know. Okay. I dig it. Let's see if we can stump you on this Fight Club trivia. In Fight Club, Edward Norton's character visits a doctor to get rid of his insomnia. What does the doctor recommend besides healthy, natural sleep and exercise? He, he recommends three things. Valerian Root. Valerian Root is Valerian. correct! Hell yeah! Thank God. <laughs> You've seen that. That's. I thought I had you on the first one. That's something I, I feel like most people would not know that. Yeah. So you don't have to do the uh, the cider or the white vinegar, which is probably worse than the apple cider vinegar. Um, if, if there was any <laughs> artist you could pick and, and just say money doesn't matter, this particular artist will do it for free. Who would you say would be the one extra artist that should be on the soundtrack? On on the soundtrack? Correct. Is that what you said? Yeah, mm. just, let's just say that again, this artist normally is five, ten plus thousand dollars for a song or a feature, but yeah. they're they're just gonna wipe yeah. wipe that fee away. Who who's missing that you think if if one more song was needed? Yeah. Um 
I think it would probably have to be uh, the artist Pig, or Raymond Watts is his real name. He uh, started with KMFDM, and uh, he's on their records here and there still, but he branched off in the early 80s to do his own thing called Pig. I don't know if he's that expensive, actually, and I actually am semi-acquainted with like I met him a few times. Um, he probably still is outside of my price range. But one of the versions of Overnight I was working on in college, actually, um, was really inspired by his music and especially his music videos because his videos have this really creepy kind of like uh tumultuous semi lynchian but also just grotesque like just i mean like you know like one of his music videos is just like him with a hooker in a hotel room and a bottle of jack and a gun and a, like piles of drugs and I mean, it's just debauchery you know what i mean <laughs> yeah um it's disgusting and and, and that uh played a big part in in some of the world building of overnight so i feel like pig would fit right in there i'm gonna attempt this one more time but if you get this one i'm giving up because i'm not doing a third shot of vinegar here we go <laughs> edward norton again refers to his boss's tie as what specific color corn flower blue mother f- that is correct yeah, hell yeah Damn it! I am an unhealthy you, you have seen Fight Club many, many times. Well done. We are not able to stump you today. Oh, and this is worse. What is this? At some point in this show, I have to drink bong water. We, it's, it, there's a rule that me and Spaz in place where I have to let him know I'm about to do it, but we have to do a sip of bong water. This is the torture for me not being able to stump you. I'll get there, but back to the interview. Um, what 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 did you teach when you teached? Uh, theater. My whole educational background is in theater, actually. Um, I have a, a bachelor's in acting and two master's degrees in directing. And that's how I kind of got into film was because of my theater interests. My ex-wife kind of pulled me into the film world because like she was a film actress and I was a theater actor. And so we kind of pulled each other into those worlds. Um, and so, yeah, I taught and I taught at every level at some point. I've taught elementary school, middle school, high school and college all at one point or another. So and I actually just did a I did an adjunct uh, directing class about a year ago so here and there I'll, I'll still dip my toes in it but um yeah I, I actually quit i retired from teaching for good in uh, 2021 so that is wicked cool do you have any do you yeah. have any weird hobbies when when it's not music it's not filming time not editing do you collect anything do you just have any odd odd things that you prefer to do hobby wise um i don't know how odd it is and my collection is much smaller than it was before rain and water damage took half of it but i love comic books um and i love uh i'm a big dc guy and i love weird obscure comic books like uh stuff that like a lot of movies are based on that people don't realize were comic books in the first place actually like the mask and the crow and uh the um, what else uh, a lot of image stuff like the max um i don't know weird weird underground kind of pulpy stuff but um also, I just like, you know, Batman's my dude. I love Batman. So anything Batman, I will collect and did check you, out. Did you see the new, a lot of weird... the new uh, Flash movie that has a lot of Michael Keaton in it? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I thought it was pretty damn good. And, uh, I thought it was pretty damn good, too. The only the only criticism I really had of it was some of the CGI shots of Affleck were a little, uh, that doesn't look like Affleck. But What did you think of the um, Nick Cage yeah, Superman I, 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 cameo? That was dope. I thought that, that was amazing. Was dope. I love. It was incredible. Yeah, that whole sequence at the end was incredible. And and the scene. Uh, I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't seen it, but the scene. I'll just say the scene at the end with his mom absolutely ripped me to pieces. I was like sitting there crying in the theater. That like really fucked me up. I, I thought it had a lot of heart. You know what I mean? I, I, thought, I thought it was one of the better soul. DC movies I've seen in a while. But, but yeah, Ezra's sure. a little um, bit of a strange dude in real life, so it's, it hurt promotion. Yeah. I understand he's a little bit of a dumpster fire. Um, I try not to get too into celebrity gossip anyway, so I'll I'll kind of you know I'll tend to watch things anyway. But um, because I I don't know, <laughs> call me a cynic. I think celebrities have always been trash. I don't think that's new. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, <laughs> overall I, I I really enjoyed it. Um, 
I thought it was cool. I tend to uh, veer more towards the Elseworlds stuff when it comes to the movies. Like I like, you know, Todd Phillips, Joker, or Matt Reeves, Batman. I'll, obviously, I love Christopher Nolan's trilogy. So I, I, I liked um, and I liked Zack Snyder's cuts, his actual cuts of his right. movies. But I was I, I'm more into the Elseworlds stuff than I am like the main continuity or universe or whatever. If that makes sense. So. Regarding As I Speak, the Annie Hero, and the rest of your lineup on Solunar, leak me some secrets mm -hmm. about stuff that hasn't been announced. Obviously, you don't have to, but is there anything you're, we're allowed to know about stuff coming out in the future for them that uh, that we can just get excited about? Sure. Um, so there will be, I actually just turned in to the label today a uh, master for the Antihero's first single from his Bag of Bones EP that he's doing with us. And uh, that single will be called Nothing. We don't have a hard date for that yet, but we're trying to rush it out uh, to distribution before the end of the month. And um, yeah, Deja and he and I have all signed off on the master and it's it's pretty wicked. It's, we're, we're, he, he's painting himself in a different light on this EP than you've heard him before. It's a little bit more um, rock based. Um, it still has some of those textures and electronic stuff, but it's a little bit more unified. It's not, it's diverse, but it's not going to be quite as um, tangential, I guess, as a lot of his catalog is. Um, so we're really excited about that. And um, there will be a, obviously the, the lyric video for just pretend is out and it's doing really good. But um on my uh, podcast, In Orbit with Zenith, uh, Deja is actually the next guest because um, I've been talking to, you know, people from like the soundtrack or actors from the movie. And so I'm pulling her on and we're going to kind of like we're going to talk about a little bit about the history, our history, what's real, what's not. And then on that, we will be um, there's going to be a, another music video for Just Pretend that's going to have all new footage from the movie in it, actually. So very cool. We only have a little bit of time yeah. left. But I just want to end on a couple of fun ones. Does anything scare you, yeah. phobia wise? And if it's if it's I, I ask almost everybody this. If it's if it's ultimate munchy night, there's a reason to celebrate. No no expense doesn't matter. What is your favorite go to mm -hmm. munchy meal? Ooh, anything Asian. And I actually just had some really good Thai food for dinner because a, a buddy and I got together for dinner and he hooked me up. Um, so yeah, anything Asian, Thai food, Chinese food. Um, I'll probably go to a Chinese buffet, honestly, if, if I'll just, I'll like not eat all, if I know it's coming, I'll just not eat all day or I'll eat like a PB and J for lunch. And then for dinner, man, I'll go to a buffet and just like gorge <laughs> and I regret it every time. And I always end up doing it again. <laughs> I'm the same way with um, Vegas phobias. buffets, Vegas buffets do that to me. Oh yeah. 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 Yeah, for sure. Um, see phobias i i i don't know if i'm i mean i i, I like they make me nervous because i'm allergic to them and i they sting because they're bastards but i hate wasps i absolutely hate wasps anything that flies and stings be, be you're not allergic you're not attacked. allergic to anything like that like if it stung you you wouldn't swell up no i am actually and i i wasn't until about 10 or 11 years ago and i got stung by a wasp like right here and my, I actually had to go to the ER because, like, the swelling was going up my arm. And they were like, um, oh, wow. yeah, you need a shot, bro, because this, this gets to your heart. This is bad. And I was like, but I've never been allergic to wasps. I've always hated them, but I've never been allergic to them. And he said, well, you are now. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They're just – they're little bastards, man. You know, bees will leave you alone because they die if they sting you. It's like a last resort to them. But wasps are just trigger-happy little bastards. So, bastards. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Uh we're we are, are about out of time, but if if you could one more time, please plug and promote anything. We're excited about uh, February fourteenth overnight dropping. That's awesome. I, I can't yeah. even imagine how yes. twenty years worth of work is finally almost released. Like that's 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 just got to be a really cool it's, feeling. It is. It's there's multiple emotions associated with it, and especially because it's like it's about this person who like. I now own a record label with that for like 15 years. I never thought I was going to fucking see again. You know what I mean? So it's just, I don't know, man, life is crazy. So yeah, overnight on the 14th, you can buy the first half of the soundtrack right now on Solunar records Bandcamp. Uh, that is the only place it exists because things like Spotify and stuff like that make compilations really difficult. There's just a lot of tricky 
copyright hoops you have to jump through with like you know distribution so we're just selling it on um on our band camp and then the second half of the soundtrack is going to be coming out um hopefully probably like january december or january uh i need to do one more song actually there's one more death of zenith track i gotta finish and then we're also waiting on a new track from feast on the fallen to round that out and um let's see what else um you can find my striped soul ep which has the four songs i've done for overnight so far on all streaming platforms it's got portal sun and moon all that and um yeah just keep your eyes peeled we're always kind of we've been promoting this movie in tandem while making it and we're always posting content so just follow overnight and solunar records on socials and keep your eyes peeled i'm excited it sounds it sounds like it's gonna be fun man and i love a good horror movie yeah especially one that has so much work that went into it and the soundtrack is part of the movie like you said regarding pink floyd and the wall it's exciting well caleb i i really appreciate your time brother um again yeah we we look on oh my pleasure uh we we look forward to february 14th coming sooner than later so we can we can uh see it when it's ready and uh jam the second half of the soundtrack december or january but dude, have a fantastic day and uh, just keep doing your you thing, too, man. Bro. We appreciate it. Thanks, man. Much love. Y'all too. We'll talk to you later. Caleb, AK, the Death of Zenith! Yeah, hell yeah! Hi, what's up, sir? Welcome to the local band Smokeout.